Hi, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Elizabeth Addington. I am a clinical health psychologist and an assistant professor at Northwestern. So I spend part of my time providing therapy to adults at our cancer center here in downtown Chicago. And then I also do research on a couple of different topics. So one main area of my research is how we cope with stress and improve our well-being when we're facing difficult circumstances in our lives, including something like a diagnosis of cancer. Another main area of my research is how things like yoga and mindfulness and meditation can help people who've been diagnosed with cancer. So I'm really excited to be talking with you today about integrative medicine. We're here at my office downtown in Chicago. And if you have any questions that come up as we go along, please feel free to put them in the comment section and I'll do my best to save a little bit of time today so that we can answer those before we wrap up this afternoon. Okay, so first things first, what is integrative medicine? Um, this is an approach that really considers the whole person and all of the options that might be available to support their health. So integrative medicine can include and often does include conventional medical care. The typical things that you think of, if you think of going to a doctor's appointment or to the hospital. So things like a prescription medication, um, in the case of cancer, something like surgery or radiation, chemo, immunotherapy. All of those elements of conventional medicine can be part of integrative care. In addition to those, integrative care will include things like possibly natural products like vitamins or supplements. There's another area of integrative medicine that we often refer to as mind-body medicine or mind-body practices. And that includes things like yoga, mindfulness, meditation, tai chi, some of those mindful movement forms that you might have heard of before. Um, the arts can be part of integrative medicine. So things like music, painting, dance, all of these art practices, spiritual practices can be part of integrative care. And then another big area of integrative medicine is lifestyle changes. So things like our sleep, how we're handling stress, what we eat and our exercise. Those are lifestyle changes that can be part of integrative medicine. Um, some of these things that are part of integrative medicine come from really rich cultural traditions. So uh, things that may come from traditional Chinese medicine or like yoga's roots in India, things that have been practiced in cultures for hundreds or thousands of years that haven't typically been part of our conventional medical system here in the U.S. Um, but again, you know, some of these things are part of conventional care too, right? We all probably are going to a primary care doctor or someone like that who's not necessarily an integrative medicine doctor, but they're still asking us about um, sleep or diet or exercise. So um, the lines are starting to blend a little bit more than maybe they have in the past. I also want to um, stay on this vocabulary topic for a little bit and be really clear about the term alternative medicine. So that's a phrase that we have used in the past to describe some of these additional integrative approaches that I mentioned, like yoga or meditation or vitamins and supplements. In the past, those things have been referred to as alternative medicine. But I wanna be really specific about what we mean by alternative medicine now. So these days when we talk about alternative medicine, we really mean that someone is only choosing things that are not part of conventional care. So for example, if you're someone who is diagnosed with cancer and right out of the gate, you say, I'm not doing chemotherapy, I'm not having surgery, I'm not taking prescription medications or radiation or any of that, I'm only going to do these other approaches, then that's what we would consider alternative medicine. And that's something that's not recommended. So as difficult sometimes as some of our conventional cancer treatments can be, they also are often quite effective and the most effective options that we have for curing and treating cancer. 
So if you um, are living with cancer or love someone who is diagnosed with cancer, it's really important to keep that conventional care as part of your, your health care approach. And then maybe in addition to that, you'll want to try some of these other integrative approaches. Um, I'll say too that, you know, integrative is really our ideal. What would be best is if you could go to one provider and they could not only give you the conventional treatments, but also offer you some of these additional approaches like yoga or a supplement or help oversee your exercise or meditation, all those kinds of things. If you could really get them all in one place where they're truly um, integrative, of course, that would be um, ideal. That's not the reality of where our healthcare system is these days. So a lot of times what you're going to see instead is that you may be going to your um, conventional oncologist for your conventional cancer care, and then maybe at the same place, but maybe in different places, you're going to be getting some of these supplemental practices and approaches to your health. And um, there's great benefit to that too. We're lucky at Northwestern and with Living Well that we offer a lot of these services, and I'm going to tell you about more of that in a minute. So let's talk about how integrative approaches to health can really benefit people with cancer. And uh, there is way more to this topic than I could ever cover in one session. So what I want to do today is really hit the highlights for you and kind of tell you the cream of the crop, the areas where we have the most evidence from research about what has potential to benefit people with cancer. This is a really exciting area. There's so much that we're learning so many more studies that are happening now. So, you know, we're learning more and more all the time, but I really wanna hit the areas where we have lots of scientific evidence. And again, that's not for treating or curing cancer, where you're gonna see integrative medicine be helpful in terms of cancer, whether you're going through treatment or you're past your main treatment or, and are in that post-treatment survivorship phase. You're gonna see the most benefit for things like decreasing some of the symptoms and side effects that go along with cancer and those conventional cancer treatments. And then for things that will be really important for improving your overall quality of life. Uh, one, no one additional note too is that most of the evidence that we have so far for integrative medicine in cancer comes from studies with adults. There are a few studies in children. We're starting to see some evidence there. Um, but don't have quite the body of science that's been done in adults with cancer. Um, and adults are also my primary focus rather than pediatrics. So I'm going to talk to you about what's beneficial for adults with cancer today. Okay, what I want to start with is fatigue. And I'm starting here because this is a really common symptom or side effect for people with cancer. You might experience it as you're going through your treatment. Even after your treatment is over, a lot of people who've been through cancer will have really debilitating and frustrating fatigue. Um, it's one of those things that can make you feel really run down. It can take away from your ability to participate in the things that are really important and meaningful in your life. So it can be really frustrating. And on top of that, there are not good conventional treatments for cancer-related fatigue. So it's not like you can go to your um, conventional doctor and ask them for some prescription that's gonna help with your fatigue. We really just haven't developed those kinds of treatments yet. So this is an area where integrative medicine is really important. And we have very strong evidence for both exercise and yoga to improve cancer-related fatigue. And this is both during the time of cancer treatment and after you've completed treatment. It's a little bit counterintuitive, right? So um, doctors used to say to people, and you might even think, well, if I'm feeling run down and fatigued and tired, then my body needs rest. And to some extent, that's true. But it's important to not only rest, to not, to not only stay inactive. Actually, you want to be a little bit opposite and engage in either some yoga or other forms of exercise to kind of kickstart yourself, help um, improve your health and your energy and help deal with that cancer-related fatigue. Okay, the next area I wanna talk about is I'm gonna sort of lump together stress, 
mood, depression, anxiety, all the sort of emotional effects that people can experience when they're going through cancer. This happens really commonly at diagnosis. Um, you may feel some emotional effects as you're going through treatment. And then a lot of people expect for um, that to kind of go away once they're done with treatment. But actually we see that some of the stress and mood um, effects from going through cancer can really pop up even more so in some folks at the end of treatment. I'm a psychologist and we know that psychology, therapy, counseling can be a really important and effective part of conventional care for mood, stress, depression, anxiety, right? There are even um, medications that you might have a psychiatrist prescribe for these kinds of things as part of your conventional care. But if you want to try some integrative approaches, there's some great evidence there too. So again, yoga and exercise um, are a big one to help improve mood, stress, anxiety. Meditation, there's a great body of evidence for meditation, um, especially uh, mindfulness-based stress reduction programs to improve mood and stress in people with cancer. Massage is another one that can benefit people's mood. And then music therapy is an area where um, we're seeing some exciting studies and some growth in integrative medicine to benefit mood and stress. So for example, there's some great research being done on people who feel really anxious when they're having a procedure done for their cancer and that music therapy can really help decrease that anxiety during those times. Okay, next topic is pain. So for some folks, going through cancer treatment can lead to pain. And we see great research evidence for acupuncture to improve cancer-related pain. Um, if you're not familiar with acupuncture, there are a few different type, uh, types of acupuncture. So something that comes from traditional Chinese medicine. And the most common one that you might have seen or heard of or tried is where um, really thin needles are very lightly inserted into the body. They're, they don't cause pain when they're inserted, but um, they're inserted into different places in the body by an acupuncturist and left in for a few minutes. The range um, differs. And we see great benefits of acupuncture for pain. I want to talk to you about vitamins and supplements. So this is a big um, kind of domain or category of integrative medicine, and it's one that can be really popular. If you or someone you love has been diagnosed with cancer, um, and that's probably why you're watching today, right? You, I bet, have heard someone tell you, oh, you should be taking this, or they should get this supplement. This is really going to help them. Um, they're also really easy to access, right? There are lots of stores available for us to buy vitamins and supplements. They're easy to take, so they can become really popular. But I want to share a word of caution with you about that. As popular as vitamins and supplements are, we actually don't have a lot of evidence for them to help people with cancer. So again, um, we don't have evidence for any of these integrative approaches to treat or cure cancer. And even when we have studied vitamins and supplements for helping with side effects of cancer and cancer treatment, um, we haven't gotten great evidence there yet. And um, on top of that, there are some cases where some of these products can actually do some harm or even decrease the benefits of conventional cancer care. Um, so I'm not saying that all vitamins and supplements are bad and don't take any of them, but I want you to be cautious and thoughtful and well-informed when you're considering these things. So what I recommend for folks is to either ask your conventional medical team, particularly at Northwestern, often if you ask your oncologist about this, they can um, help arrange a consultation with a pharmacist who can look into any vitamins or supplements you might be considering. Our dietitians, um, which I know Living Well has great dietitians, we also here downtown at the main Northwestern Cancer Center campus in our supportive oncology program, we have excellent dietitians. And they are wonderful about 
um, checking out a list of supplements or vitamins that um, someone might be considering taking and saying, hey, here's where you want to be careful. Um, here are some potential risks. Here's where there might be some benefit and this one might be okay to take. Okay. So what about the rest of these integrative medicine approaches that I've mentioned so far? What if you want to try some of those? Well, I'll tell you the bad news first, which is that insurance often does not cover them. Um, in terms of integrative medicine, generally speaking, acupuncture for back pain is where we have the most um, chance of insurance coverage. But for a lot of these other uh, reasons that you might be seeking integrative approaches or um, for other types of integrative care, there tends to not be insurance coverage. That's the bad news. The good news is that Northwestern and Living Well and several of our other partner organizations here offer many of these services for free, not only to people with cancer, but also to their family members and loved ones and caregivers. So um, if you're looking at Living Well site or Northwestern, Gilda's Club, um, several of these area organizations, you can find yoga classes, you can find um, webinars and recipes and you know cooking demos with dietitians. You can take yoga and Tai Chi classes. Um, at our downtown Northwestern campus, we also offer massage and acupuncture in some of our chemo infusion areas, for example. So you can find lots of access that way. And then the other place I'll mention is our Osher Center for Integrative Medicine, which is here downtown in Chicago, um, right by our main Northwestern Cancer Center. And we have massage therapists there, um, acupuncture, several integrative providers, along with some physicians, so MDs, who are additionally board certified in integrative medicine, and they often provide primary care or women's health care. So it's not necessarily your cancer-focused care, but um, you can go to a physician who may be uh, paneled with your insurance, who's really an expert in general integrative medicine, if that's something you're interested in. I think that seems like a good place to pause and see if there are questions that have come in from our viewers. So Dr. Addington, one question that came in, mm -hmm. are there integrative medicine providers in the western suburbs? Um, probably. I don't know them off the top of my head. Um, there is board certification in integrative medicine that you look that you, you can look at through like the medical association website um, there is also one of the primary training programs for um, integrative medicine generally speaking is a program through the University of Arizona and so you can check for uh, physicians who have completed either that training or the board certification to help you locate folks and what are your thoughts are what are your thoughts on hypnosis and Reiki? Yeah, so um, so Reiki is a is something that we would say falls under energy medicine, which is another area of um, integrative medicine. So it's an area where you're working with um, a person's energy fields, which we don't really understand a lot about scientifically yet. Um, there's not a ton of evidence yet for Reiki. Actually, um, something like healing touch, we do see some benefit from in other studies. It's a, it's a similar or related kind of approach. Um, but I'll say that there really isn't evidence for harm with those either. And so, again, I, today I'm highlighting what we know from the most studies, but there are also lots of other ways that we see benefit, right? If you try something, and it has low risk of harm and you personally experience some benefit from it, then great, that may be something that you wanna use. Um, uh, for hypnosis, there is some evidence uh, for hypnosis related to pain associated with some procedures that can be part of cancer care. So we do see some more research evidence there. And then if somebody is looking for an acupuncturist, do you have any recommendations on how to go about finding somebody that's reputable, that could work with 
um, a cancer diagnosis? Yeah, so acupuncture is, um, is one of the areas where um, we have the benefit of having some really specific training and certification programs. Um, it, the, our viewers are bringing up really great questions about how tough it can be to find a provider, how do you know who you can trust. Um, and with acupuncture, there are some specific certification and training programs for acupuncturists and specifically within cancer care. And so um, I can share some links with you all that could be posted or distributed um, through your Facebook page for um, those organizations where you can do some searches to find some reputable folks. That'd be great. Yeah. Uh, another question that came in is how do you, um, how are your services broadcast to patients? It, it, the viewer is saying it, it sounds like there is some benefits to the, yeah. what you've discussed and she's curious to why they're not aggressively being promoted. Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a great question. It's, it's tough because, um, you know, as I was mentioning earlier, we're not quite in that well-integrated place that um, we'd like to see our healthcare system go, where really you can kind of have a one-stop shop and well, well coordinated care with all of these approaches available and yet they are available through many of our services um, so i would encourage you to check living wells website and facebook page um, the northwestern cancer center if you look at our supportive oncology section of our website you'll see uh, links to a lot of these organizations and clinics where these integrative services are provided um, and our supportive oncology team that offers some of these integrative services. Um, you know, I think to the bigger question of like, wh why don't people know? Um, you know, I think there are still from some folks, real caution and misunderstanding about what the potential benefits are of integrative medicine. And so we're still working our way through um, helping increase everyone's understanding and education, including other conventional providers, about the potential benefits of integrative medicine. Um, and then I think another factor is that there's so much information uh, that you have to take in when you're diagnosed with cancer and figuring out what your treatment is, um, that we really haven't perfected the best ways of making sure we give good, like wraparound, complete, information that you can also digest and access as you go through that uh, overwhelming process. I, th I think um, th the next question I have is, are, you con are there any um, trials or studies that are open to patients with cancer that you are aware of regarding integrative medicine? Yeah, yeah. So um, I actually just finished up an online trial of yoga classes for young adults with cancer. And um, so that one's not open to recruitment, but I can share that we have some initial exciting findings for, from that for these group online yoga classes, similar to what Living Well is doing now, right? With yoga via Zoom and how we've all been living our lives over the past year. And we see some of the same benefits for yoga in these young adults in terms of improvements in anxiety and fatigue, for example. Um, and in particular, the results were really exciting because we saw really meaningful improvements in those symptoms, like not just a little bit of a sign that we as researchers are like, okay, yeah, 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 that counts as statistically significant, but something that um, the people participating would really see a noticeable benefit in their lives. Uh, in terms of ongoing studies, though, we do have a few that are open here for people with uh, breast cancer and prostate cancer on kind of overall health and some of these mind-body approaches that I've mentioned. We also have a study that's enrolling now for some integrative approaches to pain in people with a wide variety of types of cancer, folks who have completed their cancer treatment. And so I can also share some flyers and some links for you all to post on the Facebook page for folks who want to follow up on that. I have uh, two questions that came in ahead of time. Sure. And um, the one of them is, uh, can an integrative medicine doctor take a look at all of my medications and tell me if I can be taking them at certain times or in certain combinations to ensure the best benefit. 
Oh, great question. Um, yeah, so this is an area in terms of like timing of treatments and medications and even some of these other approaches. Um, the question of timing and when to do them for the most benefit is actually a really exciting area of research that's happening now. There's not a lot that we can say for sure about that, but yes, and generally speaking, an integrative medicine provider could um, could take a look at what you're doing and make some recommendations based on what they've seen clinically so far or what they've seen initially in some research um, to help you maximize benefit and also potentially to help you minimize any um, kind of counteracting effects that might happen through some of these. Um, one other question. Would an integrated, integrated medicine doctor coordinate with my other doctors or replace some of them? I would say ideally they would coordinate with them, probably not replace them. Um, so here's one, one way that an integrative medicine provider could replace a provider is if you went, for example, to our Osher Center to one of our integrative medicine primary care providers. That person could be your main primary care doctor. Um, and they would be able to provide both conventional things that you would get in primary care along with recommendations from, for integrative approaches. When it comes to cancer or other kind of specialty areas of medicine, um, you are not really going to replace that person. Um, ideally, you would have your oncologist and then some integrative providers as well. And so again, um, what you wanna do in that situation is, you know, take advantage of what is safe and helpful and benefiting you and um, do your best to stay, to keep your conventional care provider informed about the integrative approaches that you're all also using. No more yeah. questions. Okay. Well, thanks everybody for tuning in today. I've enjoyed talking with you all. Thanks for the great questions. And please um, keep following Living Well on their Facebook page and their website to stay up to date on all the other exciting Facebook Live topics they're offering. Thank you.